Hi guys, this is Sahiti on behalf of Edureka and I welcome you to this session on how to install MySQL. So in this session we'll be mainly focusing on how to install MySQL. So let's just get started. So to install MySQL there are mainly three things that you have to consider that is the operating system, what to use for installing MySQL and what are the features that you'll get after installing it, right? So basically the operating system on which I'm going to install MySQL is Windows and to install MySQL I'm going to use the MySQL installer. So I'm using this MySQL installer because this is the easiest way to install MySQL on Windows operating system. So this installer basically provides you with an easy to use wizard that helps you install MySQL and then after you install you'll get the features that you can see on the screen. That is basically the MySQL server, all the available connectors for MySQL, the MySQL workbench, MySQL notifier, tools for Excel, tools for Microsoft Visual Studio, MySQL sample databases, MySQL documentation and also the MySQL shell. Right? So I hope that you know you've got what all features that we'll get when we install MySQL. So let's just get started by installing MySQL. So to install MySQL you have to go to the MySQL's official page and then go to the downloads tab to choose download MySQL installer. So what I'll simply do is I'll just scroll down and then you can just see that we have got an option to choose the operating systems and the version. So initially I'm going to choose the Windows operating system and after that if you observe over here you basically have two options. So that is basically the MySQL installer web community and the MySQL installer community. So basically if you're connected to the internet while installing MySQL you can go through MySQL installer web community. Else if you're offline and you want to install MySQL offline then you can use the MySQL installer community, right? So since I'm online I'm going to use the MySQL installer web community so I'll just click on download over here. And once you click on download, you'll be just redirected to this particular page. Now in this particular page, you don't have to log in or sign up. You can just use the option of no thanks, just start download. So this will basically start downloading your installer. So as you can see on the screen, the installer is downloaded. So I'll just double click on that. And then you can just enter the password for your PC. So I'll just enter that. Once you're done with that, you can see that, you know, your installer community is getting downloaded. And now you can see that, you know, my package is getting extracted and then we are redirected to this particular user interface for installing MySQL, right? So now what you can do over here is you just have to agree to the license agreement. So you just basically scroll down and you can go through it if you want. And then you can just click on I accept the license terms, right? Once you're done with that, you just click on next. And now once you click on next, you have to choose a setup type. So basically this is where you can choose what features do you want to come with your MySQL. So if you say developer default then developer default would offer these particular features that is server, shell, router, workbench, Excel, Visual Studio connectors, examples and documentation. Similarly you can choose for server only, client only, full or custom. So I'm going to choose the full option. So when you choose the full option basically all the features or you can say all the products available in this particular catalog which you know basically include MySQL server, shell, router, workbench, connectors, documentation, samples and much more all of them would be installed right. So I'll just choose the option of full and then you can click on next. So once you click on next the next thing that you have to choose is the path config. Basically you have to set the path for your data directory and the install directory. So as you can see, you know that this selected path is already existing. So we can just change the path. So let's say I change it to server 8, right? So I'll just change it to server 8 and then what I'll do is I'll click on next. So now once you click on next, you have to basically check the requirements. So since we have used the full setup type, we are installing all the products available in MySQL. So there could be few products which may require any other software package also, right? So for example, you can see on the screen that you know MySQL for Visual Studio requires the Visual Studio version and the connectors require Python 3.7 to be installed. Since I don't have them installed on my system presently, I can just click on next and then you'll get an exception saying that you know those products with the missing requirements will not be installed or upgraded. So just in case if you want these products to be installed, what you can simply do is you can just check for the requirements. You can install those particular packages or softwares and then you can continue with the installation of MySQL, right? So I'll just simply continue because I don't want to install MySQL for Visual Studio or connectors. So I'll just click on yes. So once you click on yes, you'll be redirected to the installation page where you can clearly see that you know the following products would be installed. So as you can see on my screen, you can see that you know the server, the workbench, shell, router, connectors, ODBC, connector C++ and the other products are ready to be downloaded. So if you just want to execute this particular installation, you can just click on execute. So once you click on execute, you'll be seeing that, you know, one after the other, 
all the products will start getting installed. So as you can see on my screen, you've observed that you know there's some error in downloading the file. So what you can simply do is you can just keep on clicking try again so that you know it's tried again and all the files are getting downloaded, right? All right. So as you can see, all the products have been downloaded. Now after that, what you can simply do is you can just click on next. And when you click on next, you basically have to configure your product now. So when I say configure, you maybe have to set your username, password, or the port it has to run on, and so on, right? So over here, you can see that you know we have to configure our server and the router. So I'll just click on next. So when you click on next, you'll be redirected to this particular page that is basically the group replication. Over here, you can choose either the standalone MySQL server or the sandbox InnoDB cluster setup. So I'll be just choosing the standalone MySQL server. So I'll just choose this, and then I'll click on next again. Once I click on next in the type in the networking tab, I have to basically choose the port number for the server. So I'll just let it be the default port that is 3306, and then I'll click on next again. Once you click on next, you'll be basically redirected to authentication method. So authentication method is basically the use to set the username and the password for your MySQL server. So over here, I'm choosing the option of use strong password encryption for authentication, and then I'll click on next. Once you click on next, you have to basically mention your root password, and then you have to repeat the password. So I'll just mention my password, and then I'll repeat it. Right? Once you repeat the password, you can see whether the password strength is weak or strong. So I'll just let that be. Now over here, I am a user, and this is my root password. Right? Now if you just want to add another user, you can simply choose this option of add user, and then you can add another user. I'm not going to do that part. If you want to do, you can do that and add another user to your MySQL server. Apart from that, you basically have to set the root password like this, and then I'll click on next. Once you click on next, you'll see that you know you can configure your MySQL service as a Windows service. I'll just check on that. You can mention the Windows service name. I'll let that be as MySQL 80, and then you can check in the box of start the MySQL server at the system startup. Right now, after that, I'll click on next again. And once you click on next, you'll simply see that you know when you choose the option of execute, all the configuration steps, that means all the steps which would be executed, are shown in front of your screen. So you can see that you know your configuration file will be written, your Windows firewalls would be updated, and the database would be initialized, the server would start, and the security settings would apply, right? So I'll just click on execute, and then you can see that you know all the configuration is getting executed one after the other, right? All right. So once you see that you know all the configuration steps have been applied, you can just click on finish, right? So I'll click on finish, and you can see that you know the MySQL server has been configured. Now you can also similarly configure your MySQL routers. So if you just click on next, and then you can choose how you want to configure your MySQL router. It's your call if you want to configure your router or not. Well, it's not needed if you just want to run simple commands. So I'll just click on finish, and once you click on finish. You just have to click on next again, and you'll see that you know you'll be redirected to this particular tab that is connected to the server. So you basically have to connect to your server. So over here you can mention your username and password. So I'll leave the username to be root, and then I'll give the password that I entered in the server configuration. So I'll just enter the password, and then I'll click on check. So once you click on check, you can see that you know all the connections are succeeded. That means our server is now connected. Now after that, I'll again click on next, and then I'll again click on execute. So when I click on execute, you can see that if any features are required to be installed, then they'll be installed and the scripts would run. So we'll just wait for this to run. All right. Now once this configurations are applied, you can just click on finish. And once you click on finish, you can again click on next to complete your installation. So when I say complete your installation, you can see that you know the installation procedure has been completed. That means it's a check on that you know your installation has been successful. And then you can see that you know you have an option that start MySQL Workbench after setup, start MySQL Shell after setup, right? So once we click on finish, you'll observe that you know the MySQL Workbench and Shell would start. Now you can see that you know the MySQL Workbench has opened up, right? Now if you want to learn more about MySQL Workbench and how to use it efficiently, then I leave a video link in the description box, and then you can refer to that video to understand MySQL Workbench better. Now to just give you a confirmation that you know our shell is also working I'll just search for MySQL command line and then I'll enter the password So when I enter the password you can see that you know welcome to MySQL monitor and then you can see that you know our server version 8.0.13 community version has been downloaded right So guys that's how you can install MySQL So that's all from my side today I hope you found this session informative and if you have any queries please leave it in the comment section and then we'll reply to you as soon as it's possible Thank you and have a great day. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. 
Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!